Hi, my name is Martha. I'm a sexologist based in Singapore and my company is called Arrows Coaching. Those of you who know me know that I love books and for the last few years I have been documenting every single book that I have read. And out of the books that I read, which ones are the ones that I really love? So I have done videos on the top 10 recommended books for the year and these are the top 10 recommended books that I have for the year 2015. And number 10, I have conversations with the children of now. I am also a spiritual person and I have been told many times in my life that I'm an indigo child. Well, I'm not really a child anymore, I'm an indigo adult. Besides indigo adults, there are also what is known as crystal children and rainbow children. What are they? Often they are seen as children with learning and behavioral difficulties. And so these books talk about their thoughts, feelings, challenges in their lives and also provide suggestions. And it's important to get to know the different children that are seemingly emerging because we are not independent, we are collective. And so I'm recommending this book because it was eye-opening for me and it really touched my heart as well. So, And number nine, we have the book Battle Hymn of Tiger Mother. And this was a very controversial book when it first came out. And this was really about an Asian American woman who a lot of people attacked and called her crazy because she was very, very fierce in the upbringing of her two children. And on hindsight, her children did say they benefited from her parenting. She did go head to head with her husband as well. And there were lots of nasty comments by people who didn't even read her book. And so I really didn't really understand what she was going through because I hadn't read the book and it was very easy, just like everybody else around, to start judging and condemning her. But when I read the book, I understood where she was coming from because she was trying to just make sure her kids had the discipline that they wouldn't have as kids, that she was ready to be the bad person so as to spur them on. But she definitely wasn't cruel. She definitely wasn't abusive. And so I really like this book because it brought up the difficulties that I think all parents have. How do you bring up your child in a way that is best for them? And you also would have as a parent your own expectations, dreams and hopes and desires for your kids. How do you temper with that as well? I think this is a great book for all parents, not just Asians. And being Asian, I understand where she comes from and I understand that... Um, it wasn't easy for her to be attacked the way she was. So I did like this book and it is at number 9. At number 8, we have the book Difficult Mothers. How many of you have a difficult mother or a father for that matter? Difficult Mother talks about the different types of mothers or father that we may have had. And depending on the kind of upbringing that we had, it would really affect us in terms of our beliefs, attitudes and behavior as adults. Now that we are adults, there's really no excuse. We can go back there and heal ourselves if we are conscious about it. So in Difficult Mothers, it talks, talks about the different types of mothers and it talks about how you can heal your past very consciously. And uh, being a sexologist, and I work with people with all kinds of issues, including negative sexual messages from their parents. And also I'm a life coach, I'm also a relationship coach. So a book like that is definitely very beneficial. It gives me a lot of food for thought. And at number seven, we have the book Eco Sexuality. I was very fortunate to be able to receive an advanced copy. This was published in May 2015. I actually wrote a book about it. There are 30 contributors towards this book and uh, a lot of them are subject matter experts. So this book contains articles relating to what is eco sex, what is eco sexuality, what is the role of Mother Earth, or uh, Earth as a lover, for instance, and I'm quite passionate about the topic of eco-sexuality because I even have started my campaign called Ecosex. I have a Facebook group called Ecosex as well, so you may want to check those out in the meantime. So at number seven, we have the book Ecosexuality. It's going to really widen your mind and your perspective around the link with our survival with the environment. And this is a very, very pressing subject and you can read many passionate, beautiful essays in this book. And number six, we have the book Ecstasy is Necessary by Barbara Corrales. 
Para Kareles is one of my teachers. She wrote the book Urban Tantra and I attended her teacher training which is also called Urban Tantra and she's amazing. When I read Urban Tantra, I felt it was one of the best books that I've ever read which explains Tantra in such a simple yet profound way, easy to understand and I really didn't think ecstasy is necessary could be much better but it was it made a good case of explaining why ecstasy is necessary and uh, different ways in which men and women couples can really begin to incorporate a life where ecstasy is part of it rather than something that is put in a nice little box that you open up sometimes it needs to be part of who you are and Barbara Corellas makes a good case for it. And number five, we have the book Woman on Fire by Amy Jo Gutter. Being a sexologist, of course, I keep a lookout for the newest cutting-edge books that I can learn from. And I knew Woman on Fire was something that I really needed to pick up because I already like Amy Jo Gutter's work. And also, I follow her newsletters, and I know she puts out really good content. So I picked up this book. I already had high expectations and she exceeded my expectations even. This book is uh, full of uh, stories and also her personal insights as well as uh, certain paradigms that gives you great food for thought. Number four, we have the book Finding Water by Julia Cameron. She wrote the book The Artist's Way. The Artist's Way and Finding Water takes you through a process where they encourage you to do morning pages, what you do is you do free flow writing for half an hour or so when you first wake up in the morning and then they have weekly exercises and readings for you to do so as to deepen your relationship with yourself. So The Artist Way was the first one that I went through and I actually did that twice and it was very transformative and Finding Water is really more about being in the flow of life and it's very, very similar. However, I felt that Finding Water was a little bit more feminine and um, it just had a different quality of softness around it. So if you liked the artist's way, then you would definitely like Finding Water. And if you haven't done the artist's way, perhaps you may want to do Finding Water anyway or check out both or one, one or either of these books. Number three, we have a book called The Attraction Distraction. And this book is very practical about how you can apply the law of attraction into your life. And though there are many, many books written about it, I really like this book because there were exercises and it was very practical. Also, it made it very, very clear what you can really do to get more clarity about your purpose and mission in your life uh, so that you can get the results that you deserve. So it's more of like a workbook, uh, the way I see it. And I did enjoy this book. I felt that this book was really a little known book. Not many people know about it. However, I felt that it was really a tremendous book. What I usually do is I read a book and then depending on how it is, I would maybe give it to someone else. But this is actually a keeper. I want to keep it. I want to do the exercises and I would recommend it. And at number two, we have the book Ghosts Among Us. Don't be intimidated by the title. I also thought that when I first picked up the book, it's just going to be like a ghost book and about like past lives and all that. However, as I read more into it, I realized that the author who, whose uh, book and uh, stories are actually based on the movie Ghost Whisperer. So this, is, this guy who is the author of Ghost Among Us is actually the expert for the show Ghost Whisperer. He actually talks a lot more than just about ghosts. He actually talks about past lives and talks about a lot of other spiritual things which basically is not really about ghosts. It actually is a book that pulls together a lot of things that I know around spirituality and more. So I passed this to a friend of mine. She also said the exact same thing that this book is much more than its title and it was such an eye-opener for her. She learned so many things that she wouldn't have learned otherwise. And then from there, we pass it on to another friend who is now reading this book. So then number one, we have the book Manifest Your Desires by Esther and Jerry Hicks, also known as Abraham Hicks. So Abraham Hicks is actually a collect collection of uh, different guides who are here to help us understand more about the spiritual path that we are all meant to be on. So... Most of you might be sick and tired of me talking about books, 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 
But at number one, this is more like a picture book. It's just full of pictures and a very, very small little lessons that you can just absorb in less than 30 seconds on each page. So there's this big little graphic with very few words, one or two sentences, captures an idea, and then you move to the next one. So it's just full of little simple messages, this book, and it explains very well the best book ever on the law of attraction. And this is the reason why it's a number one. Manifest Your Desires is not a difficult book. However, my friends that I've recommended to read this book, they say they really needed time to really absorb the messages. So even though it's a simple book, they needed to reflect on it and also how they can apply it. So we've read tons and books. How many of them do we really remember? And so this is a simple book, yet it is something that you really want to meditate on. And so this is the reason why I, I love this book. It's simple, it's profound, it's meaningful, it's practical. And um, for people who took years to understand what Law of Attraction is about, how our thoughts manifest our uh, desires, then this book is for you. I hope you like this video and uh, you might be inspired to get some of the books that I've mentioned. And this is the whole point why I'm doing this video. Because I love books and I want to share with the world what are the books that I really enjoy and maybe you can leave a comment and recommend the books that you feel that I should be reading so that uh, more and more people will know about all these great amazing books because there's so much to learn from books and also so much to learn from each other so this has been Dr. Martha Tara Lee join me next year as I begin to document the books that I'm reading for 2016 and I wonder what would be the new books that I will come to love in 2016. So stay tuned, keep in touch, and uh, check out my website if you haven't. And that's yroscoaching.com.